Here in the southwest, our coastline is constantly changing. From the small village of Uphill to the little seaside town of Clevedon, tidal currents and the effects of climate change are shaping our coast and the way we live alongside it. The Environment Agency's role is to defend our vulnerable and beautiful coastline and protect our environment for future generations. The Shoreline Management Plan aims to manage the risks of coastal processes and reduce the threat of flooding and erosion to people and their property. The Environment Agency has spent more than £60 million over the last 25 years on improving the South West's coastal defences that in turn protect over 37,000 homes in the area. Investing in our coastal defences has prevented major flooding in communities along the coastline such as the flood of 1981. The flood of 81 greatly affected the small coastal village of Uphill. The pretty village is well known for its marina and the old church of St Nicholas that sits high on the hill above it. Because the Bristol Channel, or Seven Estuary, has the second highest tidal range in the world, it means that high tides can be higher than land levels across Somerset. During the flood of 1981, properties in Uphill suffered terrible flood damage. One of the houses affected was the home of Uphill resident Kenneth Burrell. A tidal surge at the very, very, very top of this highest tide, and that gave a push on the very old, hundreds of years old, um, tidal wall then that was down by Wharf Farm. That little wall broke away. Millions of tonnes of water then pour in through that lot and started to flood the village. Early the next morning, police coming around with a loudspeaker, um, leave your houses because there's a chance of another flood and go to the Winter Gardens. Within weeks, the Environment Agency started working here. They replaced the floodgate that had been there for four or five hundred years, and they did work then. I can't remember the figure properly. Eight or nine millions they spent putting in a fantastic double action floodgate, uh, completely new sea defence walls, higher than they've ever been before, um, Absolutely millions and a fantastic job done. Oh, great big floodgates if you walk down to the boatyard. That goes across. Even now, at any high tide, very high tide, the Environment Agency turn up an hour before anything happens and closes the floodgate. And if you're on the other side, you've got to climb the steps and come over. There'd been no flooding in this village for 300 years before it happened. In my opinion, the chances of it happening again are so remote it's absolutely ridiculous. Since the flood, the Environment Agency has been continually improving the sea and flood defences around the village, including the state-of-the-art uphill sluice gate that should reduce the risk of flooding to roughly a thousand properties. Our next stop is the famous Victorian seaside town of Western Supermare. The town is a popular tourist stop on the Somerset coast due to its large soft sand beach, wide promenade and recently rebuilt Grand Pier. Weston like Uphill, was badly affected by the flood of 81. So to restrict the effect of this type of flooding, North Somerset Council has spent £30 million upgrading the seafront and the defences along it. Western Sea Wall has also been strengthened between the Grand Pier and Nightstone Island, and a secondary splash wall has been added to catch waves crashing over the first wall. Tide gates allow pedestrian access through the splash wall during low tides, but are shut on high tides, otherwise tide water would flow through the gaps and into the town. Yeah, I'm Richard Spindler, I'm the Deputy Launching Authority for Western Supermare Lifeboat. Personally, only slight concerns, but uh, in Western specifically, they have um, just completed a project, a £29 million project, I hasten to add, of um, making sure that all the uh, places in town along the seafront don't get flooded by putting a secondary seawall up. The main thing about lifeboating is always respect the sea, because you'll always have its way. You know, never, never be complacent. Um, it keeps you safe. You know, and you can be out there. And like I said, the seventh wave, you could be out there bobbing along the lifeboat, you know, and jumping from wave top to wave top, and all of a sudden you'll just hit one that's three times as big as the other. Um, and you think, where did that one come from? So you've always got to be on your guard, because the sea always wins. Always. <laughs>
that's quite frightening, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's quite frightening. But certainly, I think the Western Super Mayor, were, with the completion of this sea wall, um, is brilliant, you know, because we got a, a beautiful looking seafront and a nice splash wall to keep us safe, you know. It's sort of done both things to Western, smart and Western up, and made us safe. So I think we're very lucky in Western so, uh, to have that. Our final stop along the coast is the attractive town of Clevedon. Clevedon is a growing town due to its pretty sea frontage and good access to the M5 motorway. Clevedon also has a marine lake that is used by the Clevedon Canoe Club. Club member Stephen Holland shares his views on the risks of flooding. Well naturally any floods can cause chaos to local business because if it happens once it will almost certainly happen again and that will increase insurance policies. Well like most people, right, um, if if more land floods, it'll be reduced farming, uh, insurance prices will go up and there'll be more problems. I suspect most people think it won't happen to them and probably Cleveland would be exempt of potential flooding. I would say the local government don't inform people exactly what could happen in the future. People, if they're not prepared for disasters, it could affect and could endanger life. Improved in 2005 at a cost of £3.2 million, the Landio Outfall and Marshalls Bank scheme reduces the risk of flooding to 3,000 low-lying properties in Clevedon. The Environment Agency also refurbished the Blind Yo Sluice in 2004. The sluice lies where the Blind Yo watercourse meets the Severn Estuary. It provides flooding relief for 2,100 acres of land and roughly 1,700 properties. Another large flood event in 1990 acted as a reminder that the town was still vulnerable and reinforced the need for good flood defences. The threats of climate change and flooding will give the people of the southwest more problems in the future with the rising sea levels. So the Environment Agency is working and will keep working hard to improve and maintain our flood defences in the face of climate change and adverse weather because, for the sake of future generations, surely our coast is worth protecting? <laughs> <laughs>